Welcome to Make Something with me, David Petrudo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this beer caddy with only two power tools, a jigsaw and a drill. This makes for a great Father's Day gift, and it's also a great way to get started in woodworking. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. You guys remember Eric, the old cameraman, before Dan was here? There's one thing I wanna fix. Wait, let me just fix, it's right there. Oh, oh shit! Hang on, I, there, I got it. Wait, I think it's okay. He left to be a producer for a local TV station. My name's Eric. And recently he asked me to make a beer tote for his television show. On this episode of 419 by Design, we'll pull out some scraps from the wood pile and make this cool flag. All that and more on this episode of 419 by Design. So today we are going to make a simple beer tote, which could be a great Father's Day gift with only a jigsaw and a drill. You don't need a lot of tools for this. It's a really simple and easy project. No complicated joinery. And we're just using some simple half inch plywood from the home center. First thing we need to do is draw in our four pieces and then we're gonna cut it out with the jigsaw. Here is a great tip. Get some two inch thick foam insulation from your home center and set that on your work surface and you can set your piece of plywood on top of that. And now you won't cut into your work surface. You don't have to worry about it hanging over the side of your bench. This is a great way to get a nice clean cut. I am going to cut just outside the line but as close to the line as I can so I can then sand down to that line and get a nice clean line, nice and slow. Take your time, don't rush it. Let the jigsaw pull its way through, don't force it. Another quick tip is don't grip the jigsaw really tight. A lot of times when you're using a tool for the first time or you're new to a tool, you'll just you'll tense up and you'll, you'll get a firm grip on there. And you want a safe grip, but you also want to keep loose so you can let the jigsaw do the work and you can control it down a straight line. We have our two pieces cut here. Along the one edge is the factory edge of the plywood. So I'm going to use that as reference. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to temporarily tape them together. And then we can sand the other edges to the line that we drew on there. A hot tip is just take some sandpaper, some spray adhesive, and adhere that to a sheet of plywood that's nice and flat. And then we can take our board and sand down to the line. So we have our two pieces all sanded nice and square. They're still double-sided taped together. And I'm going to mark a hole where the handle is going to be. And then we're gonna drill that out. So I have my boards clamped down to my bench. Underneath the boards is the sacrificial piece of plywood so I don't drill into my bench. I have a 5 8 inch Forstner bit in my drill. This is kind of a big hole to drill by hand, so just take your time, let the bit do the work. So I drew a couple marks on the bottom and the top here, and I'm going to connect those lines. And this is going to be the taper for the tote that we will cut out with the jigsaw. So a lot of times when you're cutting against the grain, especially with plywood using a jigsaw, you're gonna get a little bit of tear out on the line because that blade is pulling those fibers out and that plywood has a very thin sheet of veneer on the top. So to help eliminate that, we're just going to use some masking tape right over our line, which means we have to draw our lines again. I um, I realized that a half second before you did. Yeah. So, you know, planning is really important in woodworking and in life. I'm just gonna do both sides just to be safe. Woodworkers love overkill. So we have our lines redrawn on there. Again, we're gonna cut with the jigsaw with the foam insulation underneath, and we're gonna cut just outside the line so we can sand to the line. Got that all cut and sanded. We can remove our tape. Nice clean cut along there. And now we can finally separate our pieces. Oh, 
So now we just need to cut the front and back again with the plywood and the jigsaw. Now we have our four pieces all cut with the jigsaw. Typically, I would take these two side pieces and I would take it over to the table saw and cut a little groove in here to hold the plywood bottom. Since we're trying to avoid bigger tools today, I'm just going to cut a thin strip out of this half inch plywood and glue it on the bottom to create a little lip. I drew a line and we're gonna cut out a thin strip. There's no support on the right side. So if you take another piece of plywood, that's going to give you the support that you need. So now we have a nice little thin strip. I'm not even going to worry about sanding this. I'm just going to cut it to length and then glue it on there. Now we're just using some CA glue, which is super glue, and this dries really fast. I'm going to show you a hot tip on how to use this as a clamp. Wood glue is much stronger than CA glue, but CA glue dries really fast. So if I use both of them, I'll get a strong and fast joint. Just glue that on there like so. Same with this one. The wood glue will take about an hour to dry, but that CA glue will set in about five minutes. So we have that little lip in there. Now we're going to glue on the two sides like so. And same thing, I'm going to use the CA glue and the wood glue trick so it dries fast, but we're also going to clamp it together with some tape. We want this joint to be a little bit stronger, so we're gonna use the tape as a clamp and let that dry just a little bit longer because we have to drill in some reinforcement holes in a little bit. And we want that joint to be nice and solid. And I'm just being careful to not get glue all over places where I don't want glue. Get that lined up just right. Do one corner at a time. Put some tape on there and then just kind of stretch it over. If you have clamps, of course, that's going to be easier. If you don't have clamps, painter's tape works great. So now we're going to take a 1 8 inch piece of plywood and cut it to fit so it sits inside there. This is 1 8 inch plywood that you can get from the home center. And then once again, just gonna cut this out with the jigsaw. And this should drop right in. If it's a little too big, you can sand it. So I'm just going to glue that in place by putting a little bit of glue on that lip. So a little bit in there, and then we'll just drop this into place. I've already made a mistake. Typically, when I glue this whole assembly together, I want to have the handle in there. This dowel from the home center will actually slide in through there without any issues, because it's a little bit smaller than the hole. So I won't have a problem gluing this in sometimes the dowel is going to be the exact size of the hole and you're not going to be able to pound that in there. So maybe you could sand that in there or do it properly by gluing it in when you do all of this. I'm going to stick this in there, mark my line, and then cut this. So now we're just going to throw a little bit of a little bit of glue on there. And let that dry. We are going to reinforce these joints with dowels because right now this isn't very strong. If you drop this, it could potentially fall apart. So if I drill a quarter inch hole and stick a quarter inch dowel in there, that's going to reinforce that and make it nice and strong. I have a piece of tape on my drill bit so I know how far to drill in. And the one thing is you just got to make sure you're drilling straight so you don't blow out the side. So we're just going to eyeball this and uh, wish me luck. And 
and then we'll do that seven more times. Now that we have all the holes drilled, just gonna throw in some wood glue and then pound in a dowel. And this is a flush trim saw that you can also get from the home center and we'll just cut that off. And repeat. Now we can go ahead and take our tape off. For the bottle divider, I have these three pieces cut and marked and they're going to overlap. So I'm gonna take my jigsaw and remove this area right here. Just remember to keep your hands out of the way. If it doesn't feel safe, it's probably not safe. Clamp this down if you have to. Getting uh, the tight radius is a little difficult. I'm gonna show you an easy way to take care of that. back out of the cut and then do the next line. So we went in at an angle, we can remove that piece. Now we can just kind of nibble away at this until that is gone. And it doesn't even have to be perfect because it's going to be hidden when they overlap like that. So sometimes I glue these together, sometimes I don't. I just leave them like this and fall in there like so. Get in there, get in there. That is looking good. Everything is nice and Blush. Before I show you how I finish these totes, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. If you are like me, when you got started in woodworking, you quickly realize it's a very expensive hobby. And one way to offset those costs is to sell the things that you make, either at craft shows or online, which is exactly what I did. And if you want to sell online, Squarespace is the perfect solution for you. And if you're just selling at craft shows, you still need an online presence so people can come back and check out your work and communicate with you. They have absolutely beautiful templates. My website has been a Squarespace site for years, even before they were a sponsor, as well as my podcast, Making It Podcast. That is a Squarespace site as well. Why? Because it is that easy to use. It's super easy to update. You can import in all your current social media feeds like Twitter and Instagram. And one of my favorite new features is the optional email marketing campaigns. I could write a post on my Squarespace site and then I can send an email blast and it automatically pulls in the text and the images from that post. That just makes having a weekly newsletter insanely easy for me. You don't need to know a thing about the code, cloud, servers, or any of that. Squarespace takes care of all of that for you. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Then the last thing we need to do is put a coat of finish on there. I'm just using the wipe on Minwax Poly. It's really easy to use. You just wipe it on and then you wipe it off. This is probably gonna take two or three coats. You need to let it sit a few hours between each coat, but it's pretty flawless. So the last thing we wanna do is pre-drill and screw in a little bottle opener on there. There is our little tote. If you're gonna put ice in there, I would get a two-part epoxy and coat the inside. That's gonna make it waterproof, and then as the ice melts, it's not going to leak through or even seep into the wood and ruin that. I personally have never done that, but that's an option. We only use two power tools for this, a jigsaw and a drill. You gotta make sure you get the right blade for the jigsaw. You want one that is for wood, 
for fine cuts to give you a nice clean cut on there. Both of these tools are fairly inexpensive and a great way to get started into woodworking. As you upgrade, things get much easier and faster. To cut this on a table saw and a bandsaw speeds up the time. Get a random orbit sander. This only takes like a minute to sand down. A great way to dive into woodworking. Fairly inexpensive all materials that you can get from your home center. So that wraps it up. If you want to see Eric's episode, I will have a link down below in the description so you can go watch that. Eric, I miss having you in the shop. Thank you for recommending Dan as your replacement. Both very fine fellows. Dan, grab your beer. Good day, Dan. Good day. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate and make something.